Let's say we're looking at using Photoshop to make graphic layouts and touching up photos as well. So I've got no pre-prepared um, graphics I've got here to use with you, but I reckon we can make it by. Let me just uh, move my desktop around just slightly so I can get the right stuff on the right screen and we'll see what we, we can design and have a bit of fun with. So first up, thanks to Business Station, the ASBAS Digital Solutions Program in WA, um, also carried out in Queensland by Regional Development Australia in Brisbane. Grab this, I think my microphone settings are gonna be a bit yucky today too. Just one moment. We got caught off guard, someone came and said, ah, are you meant to be on a, uh, are you meant to be on a, uh, a, um, a, a webinar right now? Well, oh, I think you're absolutely right. I'm meant to be. So as we're looking towards this, is also thanks to Treaty Business Consulting in the Northern Territory where I happen to be. A little quote I got earlier from Jennifer Lawrence, the star of the Hunger Games, that I was having chest pains, but Photoshop made it look glamorous, which is just like all of us. We can all look a whole lot better when we're on Photoshop, can't we? And why shouldn't we? You know, you can look as fabulous as you want to look, as long as you've got Photoshop in your corner, helping to make you look even better. Just getting my microphone fixed up. Get that one carried out. Let's see if we can change it over to the better microphone so I don't sound like I'm quite so far away. And we're cut over. Fantastic. So what we're going to look at today, a bit about Photoshop and how it's priced. We're going to introduce the interface to Photoshop. We're going to look at creating a document in Photoshop as well as colors, layers, rasterizing. If these none of these things mean a thing to you, don't worry. When I first started out, they didn't mean a thing to me either. We're going to look at creating some layouts and graphics, uh, simple editing of photos, looking at touch-ups particularly on photography of people um, which is where i think photoshop does its best part where you can do touch-ups of the skin the eyes and the teeth and we're also going to look at a few alternatives to photoshop for different things you may want to do whether it's um, for editing photography or what most people seem to lose um what you use photoshop for which is creating graphics layouts which is you know pretty much the canvas the queen of that one these days if you haven't met me before, but I think most of you have, um, I work as a digital lead for Treaty Business Consulting in Darwin and the Northern Territory. I work as a community trainer for Facebook Australia and New Zealand, which has been a really fun adventure, and also a training partner for Google's Digital Springboard Program. Education through University of New South Wales, where I have a Bachelor and Masters of Business Information Systems. I was originally a doctor, believe it or not, with my qualifications from Western Sydney University. I've come a long way since then, haven't I? And I've done a whole bunch of little extra digital things through TAFE New South Wales and done uh, five individual courses and certifications now through the Chartered Institute of Marketing out of the UK. Although I did that remotely, I didn't go there to do five courses in the UK. Although that probably wouldn't have been a bad thing to get under my belt. So what is Photoshop? It's made primarily for editing photography and particularly good for editing photos of people. It's very good at being able to get hair and being able to get you know, makeup and adding makeup on and that sort of thing. It also gets used a lot for creating graphics and layouts. Now, this is not its primary purpose, but it seems to be the thing that a lot of people use it for. That said, I think that there's far better things to use things uh, for doing graphic layouts like Canva and that um, because it's cheaper to start with. You can start there for free and it's really made for that specific purpose. It's all very templated up. Photoshop, however, looks a little bit different. So I'm just going to swap screens now and go to the screen that's actually got all the good stuff on it. Let me just bring up the right thing. Where is my little um, Zoom window has gone missing? Where are you, Zoom? Here it is. So I'm going to now share with you um, what Photoshop looks like when you first start it up. So screen number three. So this is an example of um, the Photoshop screen that I see. Now, just uh, confirm with me if you can, that you can see that screen now, where it's just got a little PS in the, in the top left-hand corner. Uh, my little logo thing on the top right-hand, that's thank you, Jay, for that. Now, when I first come into Photoshop, what it's looking for me to do is pick up previous things I might've worked on. So for instance, if I worked on maybe uh, working on a logo, I may have worked on some of those things photography where i've just um, tried to make it all a different size or I may have reshaped something in the case of this eagle or i may have created a layout like i did with this particular layout for the rainbow community day last weekend in darwin or i can then go and start something new so usually we'll start over here we'll either open up something previously worked on 
or we can create something new. And when I go to create something new, I'll just bring this up here because it wants to put it onto my other desktop. Oh, come on, you can do it. So it brings up, let's start something new. It's asking us whether we want to start a particular kind of thing. Do we want to copy what's in my clipboard? So something I've already done, sort of a copy from the web or somewhere else. Is there somewhere that I want to do that with? Or it's got a few custom things that I've worked with recently. But I can also go and start working on things that are quite common, such as a, a thousand pixel grid that can help me work on things, mock-ups that have already got some templates built in, like the chalkboard. Do I want to start playing with some textures? Do I want to start working with watercolors? Are there particular templates that I've got here that they want that you feel like I want to be working with? Or I want to look at like shadows, like the palm leaves, that are palm fronds that are shadowed over there. I can then look at things for the web, which is what most people would do. Some of this would be saying a cover photo for Facebook. So I'll show you a mock-up for that. A cover photo for LinkedIn will be in there. If we want to do an, a laptop workspace, let's just uh, quickly do that. I'm just going to download that into here. And a lot of this stuff comes in from Adobe Stock Photos. So I get a certain amount of these free per month as well to use. So it lets me work with something like that. Now Canva does produce a lot of these things as well. And a lot of the other um, kinds of, uh, like um, I'm trying to think of what they, Pixabay and Pexels, things like that, where they actually allow you to, um, to use their stock photography, but they do a lot of cutouts like they've done for this one. So I've gone, yes, I want to do this one. I'm going to open it. And then it opens up my workspace and gives me a couple of variations I can then work with. And then I can copy and paste the screen onto there. So I might go, let's do a copy and paste of my messy, messy screen down the bottom here. So I'm going to go, I don't remember how to do this properly. And then I can open up that messy, messy screen that I've just taken a shot of. Came from, I believe here. And in that messy screen, it's taken a shot of, I can go and insert this into this little area here. So pick it up, drop it over here and then just resize everything. So it fits in. So you can see that you can you know, work with very, very simple things like that, which those sort of things probably work better in something like Canva where everything's easily resized and does it all itself. Although that looks pretty darn good for a screenshot of a screenshot of a screenshot, a little bit of inception there, but that's not generally what you're going to be using Photoshop for even though it's really handy to do that. And some of those stock photography that you do get that's included with your creative cloud subscription. And I'll cover off what creative cloud is um, towards the end of this webinar, because that's a little bit confusing when it comes to pricing for Photoshop. You think, Oh, I just want to buy Photoshop, but um, it's actually in some cases more expensive to just get Photoshop on its own than what it is to get a suite of things to do different kinds of topics with. So I'm going to get rid of that one. What I might do though, is I'm going to open up an existing photo I downloaded from Shutterstock of some um, solar panels installed outside of village in the Solomon Islands. I have my reasons for having that. And now this gives me a canvas to work with, which is a photo. Now over on the right, I've got my little setup here. I've got color swatches. Not that I really need to use those. I very rarely in fact ever use those, but as I move down a bit, I start to see a lot more of the things I work with, such as the layers. Now, how Photoshop works is, is in layers. So this would be my, my background. As you can see down here, background. Now, if I want to add another layer, I'll just go plus down the bottom right-hand corner, and it creates a new layer. Now, this picture area here is not active. There's a new layer on top of that. What I want to do with that layer is then up to me. I may want to grab a paintbrush, and make it, I don't know what color, let's make it say pink so you can see it. And now I can just start drawing over that layer. Now, if you can possibly see down the bottom right, layer one is affected, but not the background. So I can hide layer one and it restores it back to what it normally should be. Now, why you want to work on layers is because it allows you to isolate separate things one from another. So for example, if I wanted to go, let's make this an even bigger paintbrush. I'm going to fill this green for this purple color. I cover it all over. 
it allows me to do effects such as I want to grab the eraser tool, which as I go down here, it'll show me where all my tools are. So my eraser tool is this one here. I can then make my eraser tool a particular size. So in this case, it's selected 70 pixels. Do I want the eraser to be, have a soft edge to it? So if I make it a little bit busy, bigger, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So as I use my eraser tool on this document, you see how it's got like soft edges around it. So as I do that, it reveals what's underneath, but it gives it sort of like a, a gradient. It's not a hard background, but if I then decide to go, I want that to be a hard background. It then just does the circle, just a hard circle. Now, mind you, you can do the same thing with paint brushes over the top. So I'll just go backwards. And if we just get rid of you as well, I'm going to draw with my paintbrush now. And I've made it a rather large paintbrush. I can also make that a hard paintbrush. So we go back on that layout where it's got very hard edges to it. There's no sort of wishy washiness about it at all. Or I might want to go a soft paintbrush. Should I turn that right down again? As I do this, see how it sort of has a blurred effect at the edge of where I'm doing the brush? So it lets you have a softer effect, particularly if you want to do what is called a vignette. And a vignette might be where you create, and if you've ever used um, the vignette setting on something like um, Canva does it, I know that, um, oh, what's it called? Instagram, Instagram has a vignette setting. So it allows you to put like a dark outside around a photo. So let's make that black for now. So we can select our active colors down on the bottom right. I'm going to select a web color because it's a bit easy to spot it. And I'm going to use that soft brush setting, but make my brush a little smaller. So I'm creating then an edge around it that's nice and soft. So it's not too, you know, in your face kind of really dark black. Now we go, well, that's looking a little bit new, yeah, a little bit messy. I can just control Z to go back like you would normally do on any kind of any kind of program. Make my, this a bit bigger. I'm going to pull in. So I'm just going to use my trackpad. You can also use a mouse to do this just to pull it in a bit. So I'm a bit more outside there because I only want a little bit of it to show in over. So it shows you the where the, the side of your black is going to be. And if I hold down my shift key, I can drag that down and it'll go straight down. So it'll be a straight line down rather than me going uh, being all messy like I usually am. And then I'll do the same again. Click, shift, and it'll give me another line. Click, shift, up. Click, shift, and then I've got what is called a vignette um, effect around my photo. I can do that in any color, it doesn't have to be black. We can try that and let's say something a bit more obvious, maybe yellow. So I want to do a, a yellow vignette. There you go. And you get the idea. Now that's that layer. I might want to add some words now over the top of this. So I'll create like an old school postcard maybe. So to create another layer, we go back down again. We do the plus, adds a new layer, layer two. Now I can name these layers. I might want to lay that one yellow vignette. So it makes it much easier for me to know what I'm working with as I'm going. I'm gonna call this one text. So the text tool over on the right, and some people might show on the left, they might have their, their, their little, um, their tools pinned over on the left. Here's my text tool. So it's asking me whether I wanna do horizontal text, vertical text or something else. I'm just gonna do horizontal. And I'm just going to start typing stuff in. So I'm just going to go, welcome to, and I can't really read it, you notice, because it's like dark text over a very busy photo. I'm going, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? How can I make this stand out a little bit more? Well, to start with, I probably need to make it a little bit bigger. So I can grab this tool up here, the move tool. The move tool creates a box around what I'm wanting to work with. If I hold my shift key and push that, pull it down, it lets it come out in a nice, you know, stretch that's even. If I try to do that without the shift, it does this. It makes it all distorted. But if I want to just do it in just 
in the same proportion so it comes up correctly. I can do that with the shift key. I'm going to drag it around to where I want it to be because what I actually want to do, I want to have Welcome to Solomon Islands on there. So I'm going to start with Welcome first. Can't read it. Just impossible to read that. So what am I going to do with it? I'm going to change that color from that color to let's make it, oh, I don't know, white. I think white might stand out a bit more. So over on the right hand side, I've got some properties of what I'm working with. You can see my character over here, which is Leto, bold. So I want to go, okay, well, that's all right. I want to adjust that. So what do I want to adjust? I want to adjust any of that. No, I really just want to play with the color. So let's find the colors. I think my uh, Photoshop had a bit of an update while I was not looking. So another way I can do the color is I can look at the color that's there, highlight it, and then change it up the top here. So I've got my, my font, whether it's bold, the size of it, and then here's the color. I'm gonna change that to white. So it stands out a little bit more, but it's just still not quite right. It doesn't really, it needs to pop a bit more than it does now. So what we can do, because that text is on a layer of its own, so we've got our background layer, we've got our, our, our vignette layer, we've got our text layer. I want to put a shadow behind that text. So how I'll do that is a thing called blending properties. So let's go down to the bottom right where our layers are. I actually think I might bring our layers up a little higher because I think we need to see more of those. They, they, they're a very, very important part of what we're going to be looking at. So we see our layers, we see the welcome to layer, it's named itself. If I double click on that little icon, it's going to give me the option to start doing stuff with that layer or if I right click, sorry. So it brings up a box, which call, brings up my blending options. Now in my blending options, I've got quite a few things I can do. I can put a bevel around it. So it gives it a little bit, let's make this a bit bigger so you can actually see it first. You can see what I'm actually doing. Bring it in nice and tight. I can think things like beveling it. So you get that sort of carved chisel stone look, which is kind of cool. I might want to put a line around it. So at the moment it's in blue, but if I touch it and then go, I can set the color of that. So I want it to be black so it stands out more. Then I've got my line around it, which definitely stands out a whole lot more. Is it maybe not as subtle as I'd like it to be? It's a little bit full on. I can also make that a lot bigger. So I can make that line around it really really thick or really a lot thinner if i really want to but to me it still looks a little bit too rough i really wanted some kind of sort of shadow behind it so i start looking at, is it an inner shadow no that's kind of inside the text we don't really want that we've got an inner glow which is not going to make sense because it's already a bright color there's the color overlay which allows me to play with different colors than i might want to do on the text or a gradient overlay but what i'm really looking at here is these two, outer glow and drop shadow. If I put a drop shadow in, the default is going to give me this that little bit that makes it stand out, but doesn't make it super popped. Now, if I click on the drop shadow, it gives me the options of what to do with it. So I can then go, okay, to make that stand out just a touch more than what it is now, let's try the spread. Now, the spread has sort of darkened it. See how it's actually spreading the black a lot further out, but it's semi-transparent. We go, okay, that's much better. It's starting to really stand out now without looking too dumb. I can then go to the size by making the size of the black in the background go really broad. So it's actually now kind of put a shadow behind the whole section. It's made it actually really easy to read welcome to now. I don't mind that. If I was to go the opacity and pull it right up, then it makes that even darker. That's too dark. So let's pull it back a bit. We want it to stand out. We don't want it to look silly. That looks kind of cool. I've got my ugly yellow vignette around the corner. That's not really much fun, but the other stuff works well. Now, speaking of the ugly yellow vignette, I don't like the color of that at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down to the yellow vignette layer. And I'm going to play with that a bit. It's got blending options for this as well. With the blending options is a color overlay. Now, instantly I change that to green that's the default that came up but in that color overlay i might want to go you know i want to go back to black because to me that that seemed more comfortable or go for a, an angelic white hue actually that looks kind of cool 
So it lets me go, oh, okay, I made a mistake. Well, it's a single color. I don't want to change everything. I just want to change that. Let's try that. And it gives you the chance to change just that one thing. So if I hit that, I've got just the plain photo. I can bring it back again and I've got the frame around the side. So as you can see, if you're used to using Canva, you have a lot more opportunity to play with your layers here, whereas Canva kind of lets you change a shape, um, a shape, change the color of a shape, change a bit of text, maybe the color of the text as well. Very recently, they added in some great features for um, adding your, uh, you know, some backgrounds to the text or text effects as they call it. So you've got a drop shadow, you've got a few like funky looking disco versions you can put on there as well and a glow option. This allows you to make your own. And there's marketplaces out there with Photoshop that also include a lot of these, what they call actions that will do that disco effect for you as well. And a lot of them are free. Some of them aren't, some of them are paid, some of them are packages of lots of different effects. But when it comes down to it, this allows you to do that sort of getting down into the nitty gritty of playing with each of these different layers and doing something a little bit different with each of them. I'm going to add in another layer now. I'm going to get my text tool, click down here. It's created a new thing called text with selective color. Don't know why it did that, but that's okay. I just want to put in Solomon Islands because that's where the picture is taken. Now, everything you do in Photoshop allows you to work on it, then you gotta lock it in. In this case, I'm gonna hit that, oh, I just clicked on the stupid zoom bar and then it's not gonna go away for many seconds. This tick up here is locking something in. So you're going, yes, I'm now happy with my text. I can then do my move tool, so it's gonna allow me to grow it up a bit, stretch it out, so I wanna take up a bit more room with this one. And I wanna sort of drag it up a bit closer. See, it's giving me guidelines like it does in Canva, if you ever use that. I'm gonna lock that in, but I wanna do a bit more with this now. I wanna play with the font. I'm not happy with that particular font. It's set to Lato, which is what the last thing is I set on it. I might change it to something else. So let's have a look at what are some of the ones I've already got in here. Bada boom. Uh, I'm looking for something sort of swirly, but not too, actually, that's kind of cool. That one's called America. So I'm gonna drag that one out. Make it a little bit bigger again. Bring it to where I want it to be. It's around about middle there. And now I'm going to look at what I want to do with that text. So same thing is, if I want to do the same exactly as what I did with this welcome to text, I don't have to then go and recreate that. I can go to the welcome to text, which was this one here. I can right click and copy what I did there. So what I want to do is right click. Uh, no, I thought I could. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Sorry, it's a bit further over. And I can go copy layer style, go to my new text, which is Solomon Islands, and paste layer style. And that creates exactly the same effect on that one. So I don't have to do it again and again and again. So there's lots of little shortcuts that you're going to find. In Photoshop, they're going to let you, you know, sort of do things a little bit faster and a little bit more quickly when you do it a lot of times. When I first started out Photoshop, everything I did was very manual and I didn't really have much of an idea of what I was doing. And then I found lots of little shortcuts as I was going along to make that a little bit easier. So that can be welcome to Solomon Islands. It's not the greatest graphic in the world, just something I created in a couple of minutes. Um, I can move things around, make everything if I hold down my shift key, I can select multiple elements, multiple layers, and then make that smaller together. So I can put it more towards the center then. So I've got a night, I've got a pretty looking graphic that doesn't look so bad. I can then hide any of my layers if I don't want them. And I can add something else new in there if I wanted to. And then when it comes to actually doing something with that, so this is quite a big graphic. I want to export it. So we're not saving, we're exporting when we're finished with something. So I'm going to export this as, so in the, in the natural import export for it's a PNG, but just a tip for you whenever you're doing sort of graphics like this, PNGs are really, really good for graphics that don't have photography in them, but JPEGs are really good for graphics that do have photography in them. 
PNGs end up being massive file sizes if you're working with photography, but JPEGs, you can adjust the size so it's a little bit easier to work with. Because I'm working with photography here, I'm gonna do an ex export as, and it's gonna give me the option of how I'd like to export that and give me an idea of how big it's gonna be. So at the moment on the left here, I can see it's 1.7 megabytes. I think that can be a little bit smaller. It doesn't necessarily need to be this big. I've got over here my image and my canvas size, which is telling me I can make it probably a bit smaller. If these are linked, then I can probably just go, you know what, I'm gonna scale it back by about 50%, make it a bit smaller. And now it's only 877 by 585. And my file size has dropped down over here as well. And this is where people do the optimization of stuff in Photoshop. If I can then drop that down again and say, I don't need that to be 100%, I'm gonna drop down 80. I don't need to be a full 100%. Of size if i drop down to 80 it's dropped down to over half the size of what the file was before so it actually works in quite exponential favor for you if i think i really want to look and see how that's affected my photo i can zoom in a bit and see you know if it's it caused any major problems with it if i get it to about the that's a hundred percent it still looks really clear the blurry bits look blurry this looks sharp it's all standing out nicely that seems pretty good for me. So I've gone from a 1.7 megabyte image to a 398 kilobyte image. I'm like, yep, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna export it. It's gonna ask me what I wanna save it as. I'm gonna go Solomon's and save it. And once that is then on my computer, now I know I'm using a Mac. If you're using a, um, a, a um, what do you call it? a PC, there's not, it's not different. It's all the same stuff, same keystrokes, same things. So all up, it's measured at 408 kilobits. So it's a lot better than 1.7 megabytes. So that's a really nice way of doing that and making it a bit smaller. So that's just doing a really basic layout where we're just going, you know what? I'm just gonna build myself a graphic. Likewise, we can build another one. So let me just close this one off. Um, now what it's gonna do here, it's wanting to know, do I wanna save this as, as something? Now. I may want to use this graphic again one day. So what I want to do is save it as a template that I can work with again. So if I'm going to go save as before I go out, it's going to allow me to save as a Photoshop file. What that Photoshop file will do is going to preserve all those layers as layers so that I can go back in, in three months time, redesign this piece and change it from Solomon Islands to Fiji or Fiji to Vanuatu. And I don't have to create the whole thing again from scratch. So if I go and save that now as that PSD, I'm gonna close the image because I don't, I don't need to see it anymore. It's just busy saving, come on, you can do it. Shut that down. And now if I wanna go back and reopen it again, it saves as a PSD file. So that PSD file has then preserved everything I can do. So now I can change that to Vanuatu and I've still got a workable template that I can that I can use. And then I go off again and I can save that one and export it as my Vanuatu version. Or I can just go out and say that's all I want to do. I want to save this as a Photoshop PSD file, which I'm going to call Vanuatu. So I don't wreck my original Solomon Islands version. So now we've done both of those, might be worth looking at something like a photograph of a person, for instance. So I think we should take a photo, get a photo of me and see if I can fix me up a little bit. If there's any terrible photos of myself that I can find, this could be dangerous. Let's look for Dante. There we go, I'll use my profile photo I use for a lot of my Asbest stuff. So it's actually not a bad photo I took of myself about probably about a year and a half ago. This one was taken in my old house. So there's things I might want to do with this, which, you know, don't sort of fit um, what's in the photo now. Now I've got naturally blue eyes, but I might want to have my blue eyes stand out a little bit more than they're doing. So first of all, I'm going to zoom in and see what I look like up close. See what I'm working with. Oops, come on, drag down. So I just have to convert that to a normal layer so I can work with it. So I can see there's, I've got the ability to be able to get in really close and do more with that. 
I'm a bit baggy there. I reckon we can do something with that. Someone didn't sleep too well that night. And again, I've got some work I can do with my eyes there. So I can then go into any area of skin that I want to touch up. Let's just say the ridges on my forehead. I can play with those a little bit. Hair's actually not too bad. I think I only just had a haircut a day for so after before that. I think the greys in the beard could probably do a little bit of work. So what we're going to do, I think, we're going to give me a nice little flashy white smile. I'm very lucky I've got fairly white teeth anyway, but I want to make them whiter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a paintbrush. If I grab a paintbrush and then set my color as white, that's going to be way too weird. So let's just, that's way too big a paintbrush to start with. So let's make it a whole lot smaller. So I've got a smaller paintbrush. Now if I do to do that, and I zoom back out again, that looks kind of weird. So I don't really want to go quite that white. As they're getting closer, even if I do that, I can color in over the top, make a smaller here. Let's go down to about seven. So it's gonna be nice that I've got these flashy white teeth, but I'm gonna look like some kind of monster. So let's go back out again, yeah. That's not what you want to have looking. That's not good Photoshop. That just looks like a nightmare. That's, that's a nightmare. So we're going to go back in close again. I'm going to undo what I just did. And what I want to do is not quite go that much. I want to go a little bit less full on. So let's get in the middle. I'm going to go back to my white and I've got my paintbrush. What I'm going to do on my paintbrush this time though, I'm going to turn down the opacity of a little bit. I don't need it to be quite that vivid. I'm going to turn it right down to about 10%. So as I start coloring in, you notice it's not really showing much there. But once I actually go in there with that 10% cover, that has given me a 10% white a lot of teeth. So it's just slightly brighter. You can see it is just slightly brighter. I haven't gone over the top with it. So as I click right out again, look, my teeth do stand out a little bit more, but they don't look completely and utterly unnatural. They actually look like they kind of fit to what I was trying to do. So now I've conquered the teeth. What I should do actually is um, do a before and after of this one. So I'm going to save this one as something else and open up. So I've got them side by side so you can actually see what they look like. Uh, let's go into export. And you'll see what a big difference you can make just by being subtle. And that's the secret about touching up photos in Photoshop. If you want to touch up your profile photos, you want to make it so that it's subtle. You don't want to overdo it over the top. Otherwise you start looking like a puppet. And I don't think any of us want to look like a puppet. Now it's going to go real close to my eyes. What I want to do is also, also whiten up the whites in my eyes. Just, just a touch. So it's barely noticeable there. You can just slightly see that I've done something with it. Go to the other eye. Ooh, a little bit red that one might like a bit, a bit more work on that one just a little bit of whitening up a little bit of whitening up there a little redder in that one too so as i go back out again again you're seeing my eyes just starting to look a little bit brighter again so it's only very subtle that you can see this now if i want to really give myself a, bit, a pop of brightness in those eyes i need to recolor my eyes and give myself a little bit of a a little bit spark. So you can see a little slight, little slight sparkle right there in my eye. And on the other one right here, it's got like a little sparkle. And that's a reflection back from something, probably the kitchen bench, to be honest. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna highlight that sparkle a little bit more because it's gonna look, make it, my eyes look so much more alive. But I'm gonna take a little bit of my opacity up a bit and give it a bit more, bit more punch. I'm gonna take it to 18%. One, two, three. And then go the other one, one, two, three. And as I go back out again, notice how my eyes suddenly just got a whole lot brighter. So just these little, very subtle effects we're gonna do are gonna make a photo that was taken in pretty bad lighting, to be honest, look a whole lot better. Now let's go back in. Now I've got blue eyes, but they don't look very blue here. So I wanna make them look a bit bluer. So I'm gonna pick my blue. Let's go to the blues. Now my blue is obviously none of those are not that blue. They're certainly not an ice blue, more of sort of a darker blue. So I'm gonna sort of pick out 
a blue that I think is going to be a sensible blue. So sort of this, uh, which one here I think is more of a navy. Take it, yeah, about there I reckon. Let's take that one. Now, if I just start colouring in like this, you can barely see that I'm doing anything at all. But what you're going to notice is once I go back out again, like I did with the other ones, you're going to suddenly notice that there just seems to be a little bit more dimension, a little bit more, more pop to my eyes. You can already see the little bit more blue there. Add just another layer of blue here. As we go back out again, hey, my eyes look so much brighter and so much more alive. Just a little bit blue. I didn't want to go too blue. If I go really, really super blue, if I go like a more icy blue, it starts to look a little bit weird because it's not really anything like my natural color. So if I go a bit more. So you can start to see, now once you can start to really see it there, that's when it's going to look a little bit weird and a bit strange. So there we go. I've got it in there now. If I go back out here like this, now I start to look a little fake. I, I actually like start to look like I'm very photoshopped. So I'm going to take those out a bit, take them back to that previous setting where I brighten them up a little bit. Something narcissistic about doing a workshop on your own face just doesn't seem quite right. Now I want to try to work on my skin. So up here on all this, Skin is probably one of the easier bits to work with because you just pick the color you want and you just give it a slight smudge. So I'm going to take a much bigger brush because it's a much bigger area. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit. Let's pick our color first. Now, one thing I can do with colors, I've been previously picking colors in here. What I can do is open this, go over onto the photo and pick an area of color that I want to, that I want to highlight. So I think sort of middle tone where I'm coming out of the highlight here into the dark area of my skin there. I've got some like discoloration around there. I'm going to pick this bit. And then I'm just going to not pick obviously that color because it's a bit eek. I'm going to pick this one. So it's a slight tan to it. But of course, I'm not going to be taking that at full level. That's at 18%. I want to, I'm going to kick that right back to about 10% again. And then what I'm going to do, get in close. And look at this little frown line here. So I've just done a little bit. And as I come back out again, my frown line has quite significantly and obviously decreased. Let's just get these bits above the eye. So I can go all over really, because I'm only really putting 10% on it. Had another lot and that takes up to about 20%. As I come back out again, I'm starting to look a little bit photoshopped now, I reckon. So let's take that back a step. It doesn't look quite so bad. So, because I, I don't have a lot of wrinkles on my forehead, I probably don't have to go too far with that area. But some of the areas I might want to do is to lighten up these dark circles a bit. So I want to make my brush a little bit smaller. I'll do the same thing, I'll grab that same color. All I've done now is just slightly gone over the top with just a little bit of color. And it's just lightened things up just that little bit. If I think, oh, I can go probably another, another step. So all you're doing is just really subtly just ironing things out. And that's actually now quite significantly lightened under my eyes, but not to the point where it looks too fake now. And then I can look at other areas. If I want to look at the, the bumps and scratches, I've got a freckle near my nose here, which can, you can't really see that that well. I've got a freckle here. I'm just going to iron that out a bit, just make my nose just a little bit more smudged. So what I'm basically doing, I'm, I'm almost smudging everything to make it all sort of get all these pores that are showing here, smudge those out a bit. Smudge out the pores on my nose a bit. Now you can start to see how they do it in beauty ads and the cosmetics ads all the time. Andy McDowell does not look like this. And again, it starts to look a little fake, but it's probably at a level where it's almost acceptable. It's actually not too bad. So I've started, I'm not quite at the makeup level, but by goodness, those eyes have certainly lit up, haven't they? You start to see those whites are now starting to stick out because I've started to take away all the features from my face. Now I'm like, I don't have particularly strong eyebrows. So I'm just going to go, I want to add a little bit more power into those eyebrows. I'm going to take some of my darker beard hair and I'm going to go to my eyebrows and give them a little bit of a, a little bit of, a little bit of a touch up. Let's make it a bit smaller. 
they don't have very well defined, very dark eyebrows. So I want to sort of give myself a powerful brow. This bit of research came out last week, in fact, which was um, indicating that people with strong eyebrows are narcissistic. Can't get more mass narcissistic than doing a, a Photoshop of yourself. So now my eyebrows are a little bit stronger. And while I'm coloring myself, I might as well go down and color the beard up a bit too. Just take some of this gray out of it so it's not quite so bad. So just smudging it together a bit and I'm not gonna go too dark in there. Maybe take it up to another 15% myself a bit so I'm just toning down that gray a little bit as you see I'm doing it if you can see close enough through the smudginess of your of the of the zoom call hopefully you can actually see that this is significantly dulling down that gray in the beard so you can imagine you can do this with hair as well I don't have a lot of hair to work with apart from on my face so um, if you've got a lot more of a mop of hair you could probably have a lot more fun with this of, of trying to change your color hair a bit, taking down some of the, the gray in your hair or maybe putting, putting some highlights in. Very skilled people completely change the color of hair on things like Photoshop, where they just really make some very impressive looking changes. Yes, it can be a little bit fake sometimes. So now my beard looks darker. My eyebrows look darker. This one's probably a little smudgy. My eyes are a little bit brighter. My teeth are certainly whiter. And I probably look about five years younger. So that's how you essentially go through the beginnings of touching up a photo on Photoshop. Um, is you always go for those areas where you can get the biggest impact. So one of those would be definitely the teeth. Teeth are really easy to whiten up because like, you know, so many of us don't have perfect teeth. I'm very lucky with mine. I've never had really problems with them. So I've never had to have much of the whitening up. But if you want to whiten those up, you can do it, particularly for your profile photos. But I think eyes are one of those areas where you can have a really big impact, but it's also one of those areas where people fake it a little bit too much. And then through the T zone, so through, through here, through there, you don't want to mess with this too much. You might want to just lighten it up a little bit, but what you do, I can see I've already done it. You can see it's very makeup-y right through there. This looks like I've put, slapped on a got out the pancake makeup and I've, and I've, the, the foundation I've sort of smeared it all over myself. So if I wanted, didn't want to do quite that much, I could go for a slightly darker color, but then I don't want to look like I've over tanned myself. The whole idea is for everyday people who aren't supermodels is to make it so that you're subtly highlighting the things that you like and subtly smudging away the things you don't. So I've got a patch of gray around my beard there that you know is is sometimes I go from loving to hating, but I do like my teeth, so I want to highlight those. I like my eyes, so I want to highlight those a little bit. The bags in my eyes, well, you know what? I can smudge those down a little bit and make it a little, a little bit better. Not a fan of my eyebrows, but I can you know sort of highlight them a bit too. So likewise, you're gonna have some bits about your face you're gonna play with, but please be subtle if you're gonna give it a try, not so overdoing it. If I start like you saw with the teeth. I might then go, well, what about my lips? You know, what could, should I lighten, should I bring them up a little bit? Well, I probably could. I can add a little bit more color to those. Let's get a bigger brush. Mind you, you're always going to make sure your hardness is down here. If I try to do this up here, you see it just, well, it's not so, it's not so strong there because I've got such a big brush in such a small area. But if I bring that back down again, bring down the size a bit, I'm going to sort of color in this bit of my lip so, it's, so my lips look a bit stronger literally putting lipstick on myself on Photoshop. The problem is though, that lip now doesn't look particularly natural. It looked more natural. As I start to remove some of the extras, then it starts to come back to look a bit more natural again. So I overdid it. Now I've pulled it back a bit and the lip still looks a lot stronger, but it still allows this highlight through here so that you can still see that there was actually light coming down that was lighting that area up. So that is the art of basic touching up. We can try that with something else. We can try that with a photo of a woman if we like. How about someone famous? Let's just, let's go and mess up someone famous's head. Um, who's famous at the moment we can play with? Let's look at Ellen DeGeneres because she's always in the news lately. So this is a woman who has a lot of touching up done on her stuff. So um, from, you know, 
photos of her more recently uh, have shown what she really looks like compared to the very Botox face she has. I'm going to grab a photo from uh, the Global News. Put it in here. This is a bit more realistic of what she looks like. Because right? she's not a young woman. So in here, she doesn't need a lot of Photoshopping because she's got very, very um, broad features. Like she's got really icy blue eyes naturally. She's got quite white teeth. But she'll look at that and go, oh, my teeth, make them whiter. Well, that's good. We can actually do that. So we're going to grab her teeth, give her a bit of white. And make sure I've got my brush ready. About 14. I need, might need a bit, bit, bit bigger than that. This is a very, very large photo. I've got it set to 15%. So what I'm going to do is just, some of her tooth isn't actually that yellow. It's only the very ends of it. Just like we all get when, when we get a little bit beyond the age of 19. <laughs> we start to get a little bit, uh, our bits just don't sort of glow as much as they used to. And I'm just subtly just dropping in little blobs of white there just to brighten those teeth up a little bit for her. So as I come back out again, she's now got that typical American smile, hey? A mouthful of very, very white teeth. <laughs> you don't have to do anything with Ellen's eyes. She's got the most amazing ice blue eyes. But let's just see if we wanted to change her to having brown eyes. So we'll find a brown that works for us. So that brown there, more of a mission brown. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to dull down her blue eyes and make them a little bit more like brown eyes. So she's kind of in like a hazel sort of eye now. So you can see obviously how Photoshop gets abused by some people who really want to change things. Now she looks a little bit alien to be honest. Doesn't really work. But if she wanted to, we could take it, because she's already wearing a lot of makeup there. Anything we kind of do, we're trying to smooth any of that out. It's just going to look silly. It's going to look absolutely stupid. So if we even just want to smooth her out a little bit, she's got fairly dark makeup on at the moment. So let's get something where she's a bit lighter. That's a bit lighter. Get a bigger brush. And we can then start smoothing things out just a little. And the idea is here, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to make her look like a puppet. You just want to take it down just slightly. See, it's just slightly, ever so slightly, just reducing some of that line feature. You don't want to take it away because that's her personality. That's who she is. But you just want to just lighten it up a little bit. It's kind of like putting the soft filter on Mae West in the, in the 1960s, I think she was still around, where they wanted to look you know, a little bit less like she was 80 years old. So as we do that, Ellen's starting to look a little more fresh. It's our way of saying that she doesn't look as old. There you go. But starting to sort of verge on the edge of that puppetry because what's done is taking a lot of the gloss out of her makeup. So as I keep going over that, the gloss comes down and she's starting to look really, really photoshopped. So that's how you, you touch photos up. Um, I really feel like I've done her a great disservice by doing those eyes on her. Let's um, give her something a little grayer, a little bluer. There we go. So you can see that this is a tool that was very much built more for people who were playing with photos rather than um, with, <laughs> now she is an alien. Let's get rid of that. Um, for people who want to play with photos and sort of do touch-ups than what it is for people who want to create graphics. That said, graphics can be made really easily on here too. Let's just take, for instance, um, let's say web. We're going to look for something which is kind of look at the idea of maybe an Instagram photo, uh, Instagram post. So let's go maybe uh, 1800 by 1800. 72 DPI, which is the size of web graphics, the best size for them. So we've done a square basically. It says, you know, a white background or other backgrounds, it's going to make it a white one because it's like a blank canvas. I'll make it a little bit smaller so I can actually see everything. Now, in this, I can do all sorts of stuff. I can create a new layer, which will allow me to put some, you know, uh, I can draw on it with a paintbrush, little subtle sort of patterns of it. 
I can then make some shapes. So the shapes that automatically are built into here. So I can go to this one here and go rounded rectangle. So that's created that rounded rectangle in that same color I'd selected. Inside that, I might want to put some words. So as I create a text tool, it's going to create a new layer here. I'm going to put click here. Remember, I can change my um, back to the Lato because it's much easier to work with. Change the color of my text, something darker. And then if I get that move tool up the top, I can then move things around and then make it a little bit bigger. So I'm starting to create, you know, maybe maybe an Instagram or Facebook ad. Come on, here we go. I'm not really happy with that background, so I might want to grab something a bit more. So I'm going to grab, say, you know, let's just go find a landscape in Google. Um, let's just go tropical beach. So I'm going to grab, you know, this tropical beach right here looks gorgeous. I'm just going to copy that and paste it in. No, not you. You can go away. Don't need you. So in there, so I want to make that now the background so if i was to make this bigger to sort of cover more of the photo problem is i'm going to get is that it's not going to really cover all the photo without kind of creating a bit of a mess go on away oh sorry i just keep having um the the um zoom thing shows up at the top so i've got that background now that looks kind of good um it's gone over the top of the little squiggly drawing i did if i pull this layer down the squiggly drawing stuff comes in over the top if i wanted to have that get my click here and get it back up to the right size again and then i can create another layer of text up here I typed in tropical getaway, but no one can read it because it's too close together. So I can change the colors over here too. Now it's created my um, lines too close together. So over on the right, I've actually got control over that. So here where it says 28 point, I can create auto and um, automatically give it the right kind of space between those two lines. My move tool again, move it around a bit. Click here and the button probably don't need to be quite that big. And all of a sudden I've created what could be a Facebook or an Instagram ad. Just by picking the right photography behind it. And then you can see this one. Oh, sorry, I didn't do the old thing. You want to see the old thing between my photo and my old photo and my rehashed photo? Uh, let's go. So this is me before. I already have brightened up the teeth though. Let's get the after. I have to bring it back up again. Where did I put it? I closed it off, I think. This one. No, I hadn't, I hadn't saved it, which is really silly. But, you know, I can very quickly do it again so you can actually see the difference before and after. So bang, bang, bang. Once you do this a few times, it gets very, very, very quick and very repetitive to do. So it doesn't really take very long to do the most very basic of, of touch-ups. Grab an eye color. Try not to overdo it. So I kind of overdid it last time. A little bit of blue. So now, even now, you can see side by side how much brighter the eyes are going to be. Let me drag it over so you can actually see it properly. So even with, no, that's not a good way to see it. You can see it straight off anyway, but it's very, very clear that those eyes are way brighter than these eyes and the teeth are way brighter than those teeth. 
So just with those little subtle changes, you can actually do a lot of work, a lot of change where it's really, really, really like very, very simple stuff like that. Once I start smoothing out the skin, changing the beard color, let's do, let's do the beard color. Because hair is actually one of those things that it's surprisingly difficult to, um, to, to change your hair style on Photoshop, but it's really easy to change your hair color. So I'll just make this probably this dark gray. I've got uh, an opacity of 15, yeah, that's probably enough. So just by just darkening that down a little bit, it's gonna make me look a little bit less silver fox and a little more, I don't know. Who's, who's got a beard these days that actually looks, any, everyone's got mustaches these days, don't they? Darken a little bit more. And then straight away, you can see that that beard is so much more like it actually looks like i've got out the packet of just for men from woolies <laughs> and haven't done a particularly good job of coloring the beard you see the difference so i've gone a bit puppety there but you know with a little bit more time and taking a bit more time doing it it certainly comes out a lot nicer so back to our um to our graphics the, what the advantage is above something like this compared to something like canva is you just get a lot more um granular you can see a lot more of a a you've got a lot more control over what things you're going to do for instance if i was to get the 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 circle sorry the rounded corner rectangle from canva and stretch it out it would then lose its cohesion so for instance i did this in canva oh come on it would not have the same radius on the roundness of the of those corners so if I drag this out, it's still going to give me a perfectly rounded corner every time. It's not going to mess with it. On Canva, it, it doesn't necessarily do the same thing because it's not as powerful a tool. Pull this back in. Mind you, I probably use Canva 10 times more these days than I use Photoshop for this kind of stuff. For this kind of stuff, um, it, it's an overkill of a, of a product for doing these kind of things. What I do find it useful for is, though, if I'm making a television ad that has layers on it, so for instance, let's say if I want to create something new, I want to create this film and video here. High definition TV, which is 1080p, which is what most of us watch our TV on now, will give me a perfect layout of, if I'm making a graphics for a TV ad, that within this center area, the center area is what's called the safest zone. Within this second area square is safe zone. And then anything out here, down here, out here, up there, could potentially on some televisions go out from the sides. So I just make sure that everything I do, let's just say, bring that in, let's grab the tropical sunset, the tropical background, I can get it. There you go. So I want to get my tropical background and I want to, what I would be doing is making sure that all my writing stays within this most safe zone or at least within the safer zone. So I'm getting tropical click away here. As you can see, I can actually take these things, copy them and paste them into another place. So if I put this out here, there's a very good danger that that could actually sit out of the screen. But if I bring it back in here, it's absolutely going to sit within the TV screen. You might think, oh, when will I create TV ads? Well, I create a lot of TV ads all the time, make my own ones. I just learned how to do them and figured out they actually weren't as hard as I thought they were. Drag it back down here, put this within the safest zone. When I would do this is for when I'm creating like um, graphics for when I've got, you know, signs at the airport. Actually, quite a while ago, won the ability to be able to have signs at the local airport here in Darwin. And the great thing was I was able to design my own stuff and save about $3,000 in costs of someone designing that for me. So this is when I guess something like Photoshop comes in handy. So that really about wraps us up. Um, if you've got any questions about Photoshop, we can probably go and look before I go at some of the pricing of how Photoshop goes. It's um, not the cheapest thing on the planet. Um, but I'll also give you, I've got Photoshop under what we call the creative cloud. So the creative cloud 
is a membership. It's a subscription you pay every month. So what you would do is go Creative Cloud All Apps for me. It's loading my, because it's trying to find where I am. It's going, oh yes, I think you're in Australia. So I need to calculate that. I'm paying about $80 a month um, because I've had it for quite some time. And so I get it like a loyalty discount and you know, it, it just comes out of my account every month, 80 bucks a month, which is not the cheapest thing to do when you've got Canva at about 17 bucks a month. Um, what you can do though, is you can buy just Photoshop as a cloud, uh, as a creative cloud item on its own. And it works out a little bit less. Let me just go back and actually, this pricing is not turning out. Come on, let's try again. I wanna go creative cloud, here we go. There we go. So seventy six ninety nine Australian for all the apps. Um, you can get a photography pack, which is pretty good, which gives you Lightroom, which gives you a lot of presets for making photography better without touching up. It just plays with light levels and and just a much better way of doing it than just simply taking um, you know light and dark and contrast. Um, and then the photography pack for the fourteen twenty nine a month, which is way better than seventy six ninety nine. I don't know why though. The photography pack has two things in it for $14.29 a month, but Photoshop on its own is 30 bucks a month. So I don't know how quite why it works that way. So obviously if you want to trade around with it, that's the one you do. They do give you a 14 day trial, so you can have a play and see if it's something you want to work with. Um, otherwise though, um, alternatives are things like Canva. Canva does a lot of the stuff that Photoshop does now, um, but what it won't do is give you quite that same level of granularity or the same level of detail over each layer and be able to play with your um, fonts quite to the same degree as what Photoshop does. But I guess, look at the difference in price. This is getting to Canva's monthly prices. So you just got to say how much editing of photos, specifically editing of photos am I going to do? And if I'm doing just graphics for the web and for social media, am I better off just using something like Canva to do that? Um, because layouts are not really Photoshop's gig, but you can do it. Um, the, the layouts app um, is either InDesign, which is part of the creative cloud as well, and the other one is Adobe Illustrator. So give them all a go. Hopefully you'll um, find your way around it all. If there's anything you can, um, you need a bit of a hand with, my email address is just about to pop into the Canva chat window right now. Uh, you can drop me a line anytime you like at dante at treaty.com.au. If you want to just um, a reminder of something I did or something didn't, that you saw me do that you want to have a try with, um, by all means, have a look at that. And in the meantime, enjoy your week. We've got a few more webinars coming up this week. I'm doing one particularly big one in the next uh, two days, which is all about writing for conversions, writing for, for converting people to become customers, the kind of copy that converts. Um, that's going to be a fun one. So I'll hopefully see you then. In the meantime, have a fantastic afternoon, and I'll see you soon at more of these C19 Biz Booster series.